the importance of cleaning and oiling the Foff Ambition 620 is huge. I'm going to walk you through the steps I take for cleaning my machine. And let's talk about how often we need to do this. I always say to my students, every two to five bobbins, you're going to find that underneath this throat plate, there's a lot of lint and fabrics are linty. So if you start working on fleeces or flannels, and even some thread is linty. And you might want to reconsider if you're noticing a lot of lint at the top of your needle area that can just be the thread you're using maybe a better quality thread could be a better choice but also why do we clean our machines number one it keeps the stitches running smoothly so if you're ever sewing along and in the middle of a seam your thread breaks that could indicate that there's an extra lint that needs to be cleaned out um, if it's skipping stitches like it's sewing but not really sewing or if you're zigzagging and you're only getting a straight stitch because it's missing the zig and you're only getting the stitch and the stitch, that's another time. Definitely clean the machine. Before you call your service department, why don't you go ahead, change your needle, clean the machine. So you'll hear me talk about that throughout our video. So let's go ahead and start with what we need to do. First, I love to suggest that you take a pair of scissors and cut your thread at the spool. Then take the thread out the needle down here. That way, if you pull the opposite way, you're pulling all that extra lint we just talked about up and into those tension discs. And over time, that can build up a lot of extra unnecessary lint, and then that throws your machine off of just not being as smooth. Next, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and use your short screwdriver to take your needle out or your longer one, whichever one is easier for you to handle. So loosen the needle, I take that out, and you're also gonna notice, I'm gonna put this in absolutely last. After we reassemble, watch what, how I do that. This will uh, be the last thing I put in. Take your presser foot off, take your bobbin out, Find your little handy dandy brush. Yes, that's in your accessory box. A brush that is fluffy, a makeup brush, a Q-tip. All those things are helpful. The one thing you don't want to use is canned air. We're not going to want to blow anything into this machine. Take the short screwdriver once again. Now, the first time you go to take these screws out, they might be a little extra tight just from when it was made at the factory. But once you kind of loosen them, you're going to notice you can just take your finger and kind of give them a little bit of a swirl. Now there's only one extra thing that's gonna come out of this after we take this plate off. So take your screws out. Some people like to turn their machine off. I usually leave it on so I have a light. If you're a little concerned about having it so, you can always just unplug the foot control. Remember, you have two separate cords. So by unplugging the foot control, you'll be able to not accidentally sew. So there's a little tip for you. Okay, so next, let's just go ahead. I'm gonna just lift with a pair, something sharp to kind of get this to pop up and pull this completely out. And then the last thing you're gonna be able to do is just lift out this whole entire black area. That is your bobbin case. So it's pretty amazing how a sewing machine after actually works. This little point, the sharp point here, is what rotates as a stitch is made. So as we turn a stitch by hand, you see that go all the way around. If the needle was in the machine, the needle would be all the way down and that sharp point would catch the thread from the needle and turn it all the way around and link it with the bobbin at that time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just touch my needle up down button so it can put it back at its exact correct position. Now I did talk about oiling. So on this machine, even though it doesn't come with sewing machine oil, I would highly recommend that you do purchase some. Now if you look right down in the middle, there is a little kind of, it looks like lint, but it's not. It's like a little wick. You can put a couple drops of oil in there. That's it. And let me have you peek at the bobbin case. So see that little hole, the big hole in the middle of the bobbin case? That sits right over this. So you don't even have to take the whole plate off for you to even drop a little oil in there. You could even do it just with the bobbin out. Now here's the tip for putting this back in. You have to, number one, line up the two pointier parts towards the back of the machine. And I want you to look at where this little nub comes out. It is going to sit right up against this little spring. And if you don't, well, the whole machine doesn't work. So see that little springy part? So as I slide this kind of down and into kind of the 
little basket it came out of. Give it a little wiggle until it kind of drops down. And you can see when it's nice and flush. It has a little um, kind of twist to it. That's normal. But see this little nub? It's bouncing up against that spring. That is correct. Uh, it is easy, common. For students to get their bobbin case in kind of sideways, it's on the other side in, well, definitely does not work at all. So you'll have more trouble than you are ex you were expecting at all. So just go ahead, make sure it sits nice and even. Check that little bump against the spring. And now we're gonna just reassemble, do everything opposite. This part here is gonna slip kind of down underneath the left side of this opening. And when it's nice and flush, you know you've done it correctly. Go ahead and put your screws back in. And you might just like slightly tighten them with the screwdriver. You don't have to get them like super tight, but just enough so they don't wiggle loose. Uh, if you haven't put a new needle in lately, this would be a good time to switch your needles out. See that little hole? You can almost see it. That's where you could just drop a little oil in there if you needed to without taking this plate off. I always say clean it. Um, you know, even I mentioned, or I didn't mention the little, like a, even a little vacuum, uh, one of those crevice tools on your vacuum cleaner can help suck it out. Just make sure, again, it's coming out and not going in. I'll go ahead and put the presser foot back on the machine. I'm gonna lower it till it clicks. And again, I mentioned putting that needle in last. Remember your bobbin does need to have the thread coming off the left side for this to work correctly. Put your finger on that bobbin and come follow the little groove. You heard a little click in there, a little cutter right here. I love that. So it's just the perfect length when we bring it back into position. Now, the other thing is, is once we put the needle in, you can actually, I want you to use your needle threader as a um, way to double check that you're getting your needle all the way as high as possible. Remember, if you're using your screwdriver to tighten the little screw, make sure you don't over tighten it, just enough to give it a little bit of a tighten so it doesn't fall out. I'm re-threading the machine, and then again, using the needle threader assists in knowing if it all lines up, you know you've gotten the needle as high as it possibly can go. So yes, I can see it just perfectly aligned up, and I'm ready to just take a piece of fabric, sew on the machine, and make sure everything sounds correct. I got it re-threaded both in the needle and in the bobbin correctly. If it sounds good and it sews, you did everything perfect. So what about once a year, taking it in for service. Yes, it is a good idea to keep your Faf Ambition 620 serviced annually. That way, all the inside parts that do move also need oiling and sometimes a little tightening, adjusting as necessary. And if you want your machine to feel like new every year, have the annual service done, trust me. If the machine sits for a while, it's a good idea to have it serviced before you take it out for a good sewing project. So if you want to keep this machine running smoothly for a long time, take care of it. Remember, if you have any, any problems, you probably just need to come and get all that lint down below. Of course, I didn't have any lint in this machine because I haven't been doing a ton of sewing, but trust me, once you start going, you're gonna notice there's gonna be some extra bonus things to take out down below. All right, take a look at our other videos and you will find all the other cool things that this machine will do for you.